Hello and welcome to our next reflection on the Catechism of the Catholic Church and our next reflection on the nature of the Church. Today we focus on the four characteristics of the Church, namely that the Church is one, holy, Catholic and apostolic. What does it mean that the Church is one? Uh, it goes back uh, to the very fact that Jesus instituted one single Church, one single gathering one single people of God uh, that will unite all peoples, all nations and to become uh, his mystical body of which he is the head. And so there is one body, there is one church, there is one spirit that unites all these people together into this gathering. That is only one spirit that distributes a variety of gifts to all these people. Uh, and so the church is really one. And wherever you are, we share uh, that unity, we profess that unity, we show this unity in a visible way by professing one single faith, uh, by taking part in this one divine worship, by celebrating the same sacraments, by being governed, shepherded by the successors to the apostles, the bishops. And so we are truly one. And uh, that was our Lord's prayer for the Church, uh, for his disciples. Father, may they all be one, just as you are in me and I am in you. But we know that in history and from the very beginnings of the Church, divisions started to emerge. Sin is an ever-present reality that affects us that disturbs uh, and the plan of God within our lives. And so sin creates division. Because what happens even during the Apostles' times, uh, people start forming cliques. Uh, you know, I am for Apollos, I am for Paul, I am for somebody else. I prefer this one, I stick with the other. Uh, we all form into little groups, into little cliques. Uh, and before we know it, we actually uh, contribute to division rather than to unity. Uh, and that goes also to our own small church communities, whether it's a parish or a diocese or so on. Uh, and so the unity that is there, that oneness of the church, uh, is something that is real, but it's something that in practice we need to work for. We need to try to maintain. Uh, we need to try to nourish and help it to grow. So how is my life, how are my relationships contributing to the unity of the Church? In the same way, the Church is holy. It's holy because Christ is the head of the Church. He is the foundation stone. He is the cornerstone. Uh, he has deposited his spirit, his very self, to the church. Uh, and it is through that uh, that people who come to church, who are children of the church, uh, can be sanctified. Simply because the church has received that sanctity, that holiness from the Son of God, from the presence of the Spirit. Uh, and so the church is holy, whilst at the same time the church is full of sinners, because apart from our Lord himself and our Blessed Mother, uh, the Virgin Mary, the Immaculate One, all of us sin, to smaller or lesser degrees, but we are all tainted, uh, we all are marked by sin in our life. Uh, and so on the one hand, the church is holy, but her members uh, have to always strive to attain holiness, have to always be converting, have to always be renewing themselves uh, in order to reach and attain real holiness. So we need to hold these two together, because we might have strange expectations maybe of one another or uh, or of the members of the church, and we forget the reality of 
the fact that the church is there for sinners. Christ has called sinful people uh, to set them free, to transform them. And so we are in the process of that transformation. Uh, we come to church because we want to be holy, not because we are holy. Uh, we are children of the church. We want to listen to the church because we want to attain holiness, not the other way around. The church is Catholic, as the name suggests. It means the church is universal. It is for everyone. Uh, the mission of Jesus is the mission of the Church, and the mission of Jesus was to save all humanity. Go out, proclaim to all nations, baptize all nations, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Help people to enter into a life of communion with the Holy Trinity. That is the mission of the Church, and that mission it means we are being sent to the whole world. And there is no uh, borders here. And so everyone is welcome. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday on our reflections on the church, people join this community through faith and the sacrament of baptism. Uh, when it comes to the Catholic Church, uh, we also hear the expression, the particular church. So we, in this uh, location, are a particular church, uh, namely when we refer to a diocese. So in this Sadhak diocese, uh, we are a particular church. And particular church is a community of Christians who are in communion of faith and the sacraments, uh, as we are. Uh, and we are united with our bishop. Uh, and together we are also united with the Church of Rome. Uh, and that union with our bishop is important to us, is essential to our own identity here in our parish. Uh, and that union with the Church of Rome is also essential to us. We cannot uh, be the Catholic Church, if we forget that union with our local bishop uh, and with the Church of Rome. Something that was very key to St. Francis of Assisi, uh, to his understanding of the Church and his love of the Church of Rome, his devotion uh, to the Pope. Uh, and so, the Catholicity, it means that really the Church is there for everyone. We are united with everyone. Uh, and so whether it's with the Orthodox Church, whether it's with uh, other Christians who profess their faith in Christ, who are baptized, uh, whether it's with uh, the Muslim community who profess uh, uh, their faith uh, in the one God, in the merciful Judge, creator of the world, uh, Everyone else, people of good faith. Uh, the Church is for everyone because Jesus has come on earth for everyone, not for a particular group of people. And so the mission uh, encompasses everyone. And that mission uh, also goes back to the other characteristic of the Church, that this Church is apostolic Church. The foundation of the Church, we mentioned the cornerstone is Jesus, uh, but the foundation stones, the pillars of the Church, are the Apostles, those witnesses to his life, to his death, and to his resurrection. Uh, so we are apostolic uh, because we are based on that foundation of the Apostles. We are apostolic because we keep and we hand on the teaching received and passed on by the Apostles to us. Uh, and we continue to be guided by the Apostles. We are continue to be taught by them and sanctified by them through our local shepherds, through our bishops, who are the successors uh, to the Apostles. And so we are part of this Church, 
the mystery, uh, the struggle that we need to try to understand almost the two aspects of the church. Remember, I think it was yesterday we talked about how the church encompass, encompasses within itself both the visible structures and the people who are present, the visible reality, as well as the spiritual, the invisible reality. And that union of the two is present in all those four characteristics. Essentially, the Church is one, holy, Catholic and apostolic uh, because of the person of Jesus and his mission. The mission that he passed on to his apostles to continue. And so holiness, the gifts, the means of salvation, the fullness of the means of salvation is being deposited for us in the Catholic Church. Uh, but we are to make use of it. And in a degree, to a degree that we make use of all these gifts, uh, then we do grow in unity. We will grow in holiness. Uh, we will grow in that Catholicity. And where we will become more apostolic. Uh, to a degree that we are not faithful to that teaching of the Church, uh, the opposite becomes true. Uh, so the Church realizes within itself the mystery of the Kingdom of God. Uh, because the Kingdom of God is already here, as Jesus says. It's here. It's in your midst. It's among you. But we also know that it's not fully here. We are awaiting uh, for the full reign of God to come. That's why we keep praying to our Lord, come Lord Jesus. And so the very being of the church uh, is a mystery. It is a sign and it is a means of attaining uh, that what we are waiting for. So let's be thankful today for all the gifts that we have received through the Church. Let's be thankful for the fact that Jesus has established the Church for our salvation, for our good. Uh, and let us ask ourselves, how do I contribute to the life of the Church? If I am a member of the Church, uh, if I am baptized and I profess a Catholic faith that I am a Catholic, I celebrate the sacraments, then it is my responsibility to understand and ask myself, how do I contribute to its unity? How do I contribute to its holiness? What is my contribution uh, to the fact that it's a universal church, it's meant to embrace all people? And how do I live out its apostolic dimension? because it's yours and my responsibility to reflect on that and to try to put it into practice as best we can. God bless.